Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joel Duggan and this is the Friday Lego Let's Chat. What's become a tradition here on the channel and a very cool way to spend my Friday afternoon with all of you. We are going to eventually continue with the TIE Interceptor. This is the UCS Star Wars set uh, number 75382. I can never remember those off the top of my head. There is a link in chat. Thank you to anyone that wants to put it in there. It is bang set and you will get a link to see the set on lego.ca or .com or wherever you're hanging out. However, I see that Grandpa Crafter is in the chat. Uh, therefore, I may proceed if you were paying attention on Instagram, which you should follow me on Instagram, by the way. It's at Joel Duggan. I post both on Twitter and on Instagram when I go live uh, for these let chats. And uh, I have a surprise um, for you and for me because I don't know what this is. Grandpa Crafter sent in two packages. So we're going to unbox them live here at the start of the stream. Uh, we'll go back to the Interceptor almost immediately after that. But I do, I do have the feeling that this might be the future of the Lego Let's Chat. Uh, this is also going to be very tricky to open because there is addresses and things on one side of it. So I believe Alistair said I can just open this up here. So Alistair dropped this off to me last night. This is one of them. This is a small box, if you can believe it. Uh, Cosmic Dancer is gloating in the chat that they know what it is. I think Alistair knows what it is as well. Uh, and Alistair only gave me part of the story. So Grandpa Crafter, once these are opened, if you would fill us in on the blanks, uh, let me know, because I feel like there was a bit of a, an adventure to get these from where they started to me. And Alistair couldn't really reveal that without probably giving away what was inside. And I said, no, no, don't tell me. We'll, we'll discuss it tomorrow live on stream. So this is super fun. Uh, I will say... Many thank yous to Grandpa Crafter over the next few minutes, I'm sure. Uh, but cheers. I, I really appreciate the support. Not just here for the unboxing, but also for the other ways that you support uh, via Patreon and with PayPal donations and stuff. I just, I really, really appreciate it. It's, it's, a great, uh, it's a great feeling as a creator to know that there's people out there that just enjoy the work that you do so much. And I, I truly, truly appreciate it. But enough yapping. Let's... Let's see what's happening inside the box. So until it's opened, it exists and it doesn't exist, right? I will also ask a preemptive forgiveness. I'm expecting a delivery from Amazon today. Not Lego, it's actually just supplements. Uh, but as such, I have to leave my phone on. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? This is wild. <laughs> Holy crap. So this is a my own creation. That's the front gate to West Hill in Minecraft that I build every week on the Citadel server. That is ridiculously cool. The West Hill main gate for ages 12 and up. 2,700 pieces? Holy nuggets. Sixty centimeters, forty centimeters by thirty-six centimeters. That is not a small piece of kit, Grandpa Crafter. Thank you ever so much. How did? Oh, all right. <laughs> there's a skeleton, custom Joel Duggan Minecraft skin, <laughs> uh, and a cave spider. Apparently, that is really neat. It has my, my website on the side. Grandpa Crafter, I was not expecting that. That is wild. Um, I won't say precisely where uh, on the planet it came from, just in case Grandpa Crafter doesn't want that revealed. 
um, but I will if so um, instructed in chat. However, suffice to say it was from a very long way away, like other side of the planet far away. Thank you ever so much. That's just really, really cool. So you obviously know uh, that these Lego Fridays are something that I tend to space out. Uh, the, the way that I do it is usually th two to three bags a week. So we'll continue with the UCS tie interceptor until that's done. And then afterwards, we'll pick one of these sets. I guess there's another box here to go as well. Um, we'll pick one of these and we'll, we'll go forward with that. That is wild. I, I didn't even know that was possible. I knew people could make their own designs and I knew people could package those designs and sell them on things like Bricklink and sell the plans that way. But the fact that this is from Minecraft, like from my own Minecraft world is just wild. A piece of history too, because uh, a few a few weeks ago, a few months ago, we changed the top of the, of the front gate. This is the, this, this is the original, the OG front gate. Very, very cool. Some side art as well. I'm not sure how well that shows up on camera. My camera, I took the autofocus off. It's, it's focused mainly, mainly on the, the desktop. Very, very cool. Uh, Grandpa Crafter says that's fine. Parts came from all over too. So all the way from North Africa to me here in Nova Scotia. That is just wild. You changed it just after I finished the model. There was a, an anguish on the chat between <laughs> me and Kozik on that stream. Oh, yeah. Yep. I try not to go back and change things, but sometimes... Sometimes change is necessary. All right, how am I going to unbox this one without showing the address information? Um, actually, you know what? I think as a stroke of luck, because it was delivered to Alistair, the tape is covering the address information. So we're good. We're good. Okay. Just the postage was there, but that's right. Not a big deal. I may have to slide this out of, out of work. Oh, 2700 parts take up a lot of room. Oh, I see. So this is just more of the Oh, gotcha. This is extended parts list. I understand. Very cool. That is really neat. That is a lot of pieces. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Grandpa Crafter, that is really thoughtful. I really appreciate it. Oop, I just banged my mic. Sorry about that. Make sure I didn't turn it up. No, we're good. Three bags a week is going to cause a problem with that one? Yeah, it might go faster. It might go faster. Um, I will, before we move on, I just, I'm going to open up this one just to kind of see... Oh, cool. Printed instructions. Okay. And just, you know, more of the, the smaller bags. It's awesome that they're separated. That's really cool. Holy crap. There's like images from... Oh my goodness. We'll get into this when we actually start building... What a really cool idea, Grandpa Crafter. Thank you ever so much. Wow. Box art and everything. Really, really well done. I agree, Scotsman. Very well done. 
Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have model, I have instructions, I have bags somewhere nearby. We are on six, seven, eight. I mean, these are small. We might get more than six, seven, eight done today, but we'll see. And I need coffee. Fresh as can possibly be. Good stuff. All right, you can move over there. So as I mentioned, this is a tie interceptor. Where did I put my knife? We will have to um, we'll have to get some details going. So while I'm pushing this stuff out, how how did that come about, Grandpa Crafter? Like, is there a website? Did you design everything yourself? Like, what? How does that how does that come to be? It's funny that that this actually happened because we were actually discussing with a patron of the Spawn Chunks in the Render Distance uh, this past week someone had written in as Johnny and I were talking about Lego and some of the odd pieces that have been gone into the uh, tie interceptor and the person that wrote in I want to say it was Jack John Jack it was a J it's a J name um, didn't have a handle so it was just like the name plus their final initial which I think was also J um, and they, they, they're a builder, like they're a, a my own creation builder, they're a mock builder. And so they were explaining the different reasons why, how people design things in, in real life versus on the computer and all this kind of stuff. And so it was really insightful. And they wrote a second time, like we have another email from them to read this week on the render distance of the show, talking about more kind of behind the scenes Lego stuff. So it was very cool. And I think that there's a, there's a huge overlap between Lego and Minecraft. And I think that's one of the reasons, because I grew up obviously building Lego, I'm an 80s kid. And I think that's one of the reasons why Minecraft just got its hooks into me when I first tried it is that it was just so similar to Lego without all the piece hunting <laughs> um, in a really, really good way. And I think that's why Minecraft has just stuck with me as my main game of, of choice, right? Grandpa Crafter says, back around Christmas last year, I discovered there was some software for 3D modeling Lego I teach design tech, so that caught my interest on multiple levels. Oh, very cool. We'll have to chat more about that, or, or you can feel free to, I think you you should be able to share links in the chat, Grandpa Crafter. So if you've got a link to the software that you want to share, then by all means, there might be other people in the chat that'd be interested in that. Um, I'll be happy to relay it verbally, so people watching later on YouTube could also check it out should they want. Not sure if I'm shooting myself in the foot here by putting these two far towards me or not. These have like a weird texture to them. They are, they're like a matte finish. Normally these are glossy, but that's actually got a texture to it. Neat. Ah, uh, when I really get into the manual, I'll realize I'll have to sort the parts. Well, I guess that'll that'll add some engagement. I've never done a mock on stream. I've only ever bought and and built um, Lego kits put out by Lego, so that'll be interesting. I've always wanted to. Some of the stuff on um, uh, what's the website that I like? Brick Brothers Brick, I think. I don't remember the name of the website that I like. No, uh, YouTube channel. 
they they sell their own mocks and they seem to do quite well with it they they really they do a lot of like we like this star wars ship but we think we can do it better and so that's what they they put out like a a better version according to them Trying it out led to the thought that I'd like to build something. Then I was watching your stream and thought something from West Hill. I picked the gate as an iconic build. Originally thought it might get done in time to send you for Christmas. Two days later, I realized it was way too optimistic. Ah, I see. So I remember way back around Christmas time, Cosmic had asked me if it would be okay if she shared some of my information for, for a gift. And I said, yeah, sure. Like, I trust you. Like, she, she wanted it to, or they wanted it to be a surprise. And, um, and so didn't tell me anything else. But I trust them. So I was like, sure. Like, do, do whatever, do whatever you want. So this is the, the end result. Uh, Brink, Bricklink Studio. Bricklink, Bricklink.com version three studio. Uh, I'm sure people have go, if you go to Bricklink.com, if you're watching this later, on uh on youtube then you'll be able to find the bricklink studio version 3 which is how grandpa crafter designed the front gate for westell that's really cool cosmic finally done work for the week good stuff glad to hear it that's why I like this so much as a Friday afternoon thing for me, because technically this is work, but it, it does not feel like it. So it makes it makes Friday feel feel very much like I'm already off for the weekend. And if you can't tell, last night was the night at the pub with the guys and so my voice is definitely on the side of Disney villain which I'm okay with I don't mind there's something fun I think when you uh, talk for a living I don't quite have the resonance of someone like James Earl Jones but if I get sick, I can definitely start quoting Darth Vader, and it sounds close, but it's not, not quite there. So much of being a good villain with a deep voice is also speaking like 50% slower than everyone else. No contractions. Just sort of death and mayhem. Uh, I did get the smaller tower finished over Christmas break. Put the rest, uh, took many more weeks than I wanted a manual and a box to make it quote unquote proper. So building all the bits ended up being months of fun for me. Now we'll have weeks more. Grandpa Crafter, that is just fantastic. Uh, the fact that you put so much time into designing that and sending that, that's just amazing. Thank you so much. Mind Trip Media with the Lurk and the 100 Bits. Always good to see you. Thanks for the 100 Bits. The support, as always, is wonderfully appreciated. <laughs> Cosmic, you like Disney Villain, Joel? I'm going to try something different. My guess is that these are the front panels for the um, the wing struts on the TIE Fighter. If I was to hazard a guess.
I agree, Dan. It was a very good surprise. Because the thing is, like, gifting Lego, I mean, immediately after someone picks up a box, even when it's super tightly packaged and not rustling around very much, as these were, uh, they, um, you, you know immediately, especially if you're familiar, that it's Lego in the box. Of course, you, do, you may not know what's set. Um, sometimes I can make a guess, uh, depending on if I've t talked about a set recently on stream or, um, if I've recently updated like a Lego wish list on my discord chat, like that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's one of those things where you, you, you just couldn't predict that, that someone was going to bring in a build from Westall. Like that would have been the, like I, I never would have guessed. Never in a million years. Never in a million years. With the shape of the box that uh, the extra pieces came in, like not the one with the instruction booklet, but the lar the larger box, uh, I I was thinking maybe like one of the Lego vehicles. That was my thought. It was like, oh, maybe it's a Lego vehicle. Um, we've talked about those on stream before. But uh, this is a total surprise. I also, I like being surprised, so I, I don't try to guess, like, it, at Christmas time, birthday time, if someone hands me something that's wrapped, like, I don't try to guess what's in it. I just politely open it and, you know, enjoy the moment. I, I don't like spoiling surprises. I really don't like spoilers in, like, my content. Man, I get, I get mad if I get a piece of content, like a Marvel movie or show or, um, I had a, a, a moment in Game of Thrones spoiled for me back when I was doing the show, and I was mad really cheese me off true purple subscribing at tier one 64 months that is a full minecraft stack of months can we get some love and chat for true purple that's amazing it boggles my mind how long some of you have been with me supporting this channel it's just uh just amazing I would honestly have to hear a Disney villain Joel voice stream right next to a suave rom-com Joel voice in order to tell the difference. <laughs> suave rom-com Joel. I have not, I've not heard that. Suave is not something I would consider. Funny. I, I'm the, I'm the funny, charming one. Pat self on back. Uh, not, not the suave one. That's for sure. That's for sure. We've reached the, the leapfrog phase. Where I'm never going to be able to sort this out. I always find it funny. They give you those extra pieces, but it means that instead of an even number of pieces, you end up with an odd number of pieces. And you're like, why did you do this to me? Don't you know I like to lay things out straight? Hunter triple five. Trying to get a hype train started with another 100 bits. Thanks very much. The Friday stream after the third Thursday is always a treat. Well, actually, this was, we moved the third Thursday. Uh, third Thursday in May was actually last week, but we had all just gotten together uh, the week of my birthday. And it just felt like too soon, you know, like we just, we, I thought it was better to add a week. Um, we tried, um, Peyton was away on a family thing and uh, we tried to get him back, but he he was unable to get back in town, so. Um, he would have absolutely missed it last week, and so that's why we tried to uh, to push it as well. But um, it's all right. We'll just, there's a couple of guys as well. Uh, Matt was busy. Uh, what was Matt doing? Studying or doing? A, he's doing his masters, so he had a, a project due 
and so he couldn't make it. But sorry, this is why there's a standing invite. Why there's a standing invite, which I don't know how much I've talked about this. I've certainly talked about it on the Citadel Cafe. I don't know how often I've talked about it on streaming other than just to mention that it's something that I do. But uh, over a year ago, so January of 2023, I suggested to all of my guy friends that we set up a standing get together for at least a pint. You can come for a burger, stay for a beer, stay for two, whatever you want. Uh, every third Thursday of the month, so once a month, and it's just the guys, no, no kids, no wives, no girlfriends, not that we don't love them, just that it's, I felt that it was important to get my guy friends out and just have that standing face-to-face -face time, right? And I, I think it's been really good. I, I've really enjoyed it. I've heard from a number of the guys just separately on their own that say they really enjoy it. And what I like so much about it, and I would encourage anybody, um, and I don't want to, I mean, do it with your girlfriends too, uh, but I, I encourage any of the guys out there, like just set something up if you don't have it already. Uh, there's no pressure. If you can't make it this month, you can just come next month. And it's, a it's like a low cost. It's not an expensive place. It's a pub. Pint is seven bucks, maybe eight if it's a fancy craft beer. Uh, but it's very accessible. And because of the standing invite, I don't have to chase anyone down. We, we don't have to worry about who's coming, who's not. We just, there's a very quick check just before we get there. It's like, uh, are you in or out? Just, and it's only because we need to have a head count for, um, for a table. Because if they, if there's six of us, we might need a bigger table than if there isn't. And that's it. That's how we roll. And it's been fantastic. So if you haven't already, I highly suggest it. And it doesn't have to be a pub, obviously. If, if you and your friends don't drink, make it a cafe, make it a restaurant where they have really good pizza. I don't know, whatever you want. Whatever the thing is that you want to do. Dan Grice says, what are friends? They're the people that give you crap and put you in your place. At least that's how guy friends work out. which I received last night. That's fine. One of the guys around the table last night I've known for 40 years. Friends for 35, but we've known each other for 40. So like first day at school stuff. Cosmic, I think you could arrange that. I think you could. You could probably get one going. There is a hype train with one minute and 22 seconds left. If you'd like to participate, folks, you'll get some emotes from Twitch. And you can help support this kind of work that I do. It is a prime sub, 100 bits, or a tier one sub to jump on the hype train. Hunter Triple Five says most of my friends are scattered scattered all over the world, but I do have a standing monthly lunch dinner date with one who lives. Yeah, cool. It doesn't have to be many. It can be it can be just you know, it can be individual people. Hunter Triple Five grabbing a hold of that hype train and gifting five tier one subs. Jack J Stone sixty four, Dean Guy TV, Lord Zephyr thirteen. Bam, SE 1970, and it's Katie 17. You've all got gift subs thanks to Hunter Triple Five. Make sure you, you thank them if you're here live or thank them later if you're here later. And connect your Discord and your Twitch so that you can join the Joel Duggan Discord in between streams. That's where we all hang out and talk nerdy to one another. That sounded looter than it, it was intended to, to sound. We talk about nerdy stuff. Thank you so much, Hunter Triple Five. The real question is why after, I can't even remember how long Hunter has been in my chat and a moderator, I continuously use your full name as if I'm your mother getting you in trouble. 
Oh, did I miss Sweet Sandy's bits? I'm sorry, Sandy. 100 bits from Sweet Sandy. Thank you so much, Sweet Sandy. That was probably what kicked off the hype train. And Grandpa Crafter did 100 bits. Sorry about missing those, folks. I was not looking. Thank you for all of the support. That is now a level 2 hype train, or in the process of being a level 2 hype train, with another 3 minutes and 27 seconds to go. Twitch actually added some new emotes. Whenever these hype trains happen, I get a new emote, so that's cool. What are we doing for time? Oh, good. I don't remember what page. I want to say it's in the 60s. What bag did I say this was? Six? I think this is it here. That's bag five. Bag six. There we go. Doing my best with these lights not to reflect off the uh, the instruction book, but sometimes you can't help it. Hunter 555, yeah, I remember that too. That reminds me of the, the quote from uh, Aliens. In the pipe, five by five. <laughs> I'm the only person mature enough to be my par your parent other than your actual parents. Thank you. As someone that just had a birthday, I really appreciate that. Hashtag sarcasm. Who let you in? All right. I guess here we go. <laughs> Cosmic is offering to uh, have a mod battle. Don't feel alone, Joel. I call everyone old. Well, that's good. I'm glad that you are at least an equal opportunist when it comes to insulting your elders. And we'll steer away just because I don't want the chat to get sidetracked into age talk. Right, got two of those, one each of these, and two of these little guys. This is all coming back to me. I remember doing this last week. So this is indeed the front plates on the wing struts. Emotes are being delivered. Thanks very much for that hype train, folks. Really appreciate it. When you get your emotes, make sure you share it in chat. Let everyone know what you got. a teddy bear with a baseball bat that's either really cute or ominous depending on whether you've played Friday Night at Freddy's I 
I have not. I've only just seen the ads. They're not my kind of game, but I have seen them around. Such a specific little build. It's like seven little pieces that all come together in this one little one little thing. Just to get a very specific shape. You thought it was a dog wagging his tail? I like the trash can. That's a cute one. Lily or Lely? Probably Lily. Welcome in. Thanks for saying hello. Uh, does it tell me what emote I got? I don't think I've... I think I have it. Okay, there's that. Step 112. The possum in the bin is from Cat the Possum. Cool. Is that... Remind me, I feel like Cat the Possum has raided me before. And I, are they a Minecraft player? I'm trying to remember. Oh yes, they cover up the bit that I thought was cool. Or they, they did last time. Maybe they're not doing it this time. It probably is a later stage. Yes, it is a later stage. I see. Got my hopes up. that and then we have one of these and one of those and we have to do that again and I think I'll do that again before I put it on uh, you've rated them before cat the possum minecrafter uh, okay cool Good to know. Do they play on an SMP that I might recognize? Here, here's a here's a fun little uh, confession. Um, as a content creator, I don't consume a lot of content. I tend to I tend to spend my off time not. I mean, I consume some Minecraft stuff, but not a lot. I don't watch a lot of other streamers, and I think that's just because. Well, I, I will say. First off, the Twitch UI for Xbox is horrendous. It is absolutely awful. So that's one of the reasons why I don't watch Twitch. Because most of my watch time is in the living room on my TV. 
Um, if something important is happening or something cool is happening that I know about, I will tune in, but very, very seldom. I used to, when I played, when I played computer games at, at my PC off stream, I used to have more Twitch things on in the background, but I don't do that very much anymore. I'm, when I'm playing leisurely, I'm usually playing on my Xbox and if I'm playing Minecraft, I'm streaming. So I think I've mentioned this a number of times before on Minecraft streams, but I don't play Minecraft off camera. There is no, no thing that happens in the Citadel, or I shouldn't say no, it's not 100%, but it's like 98% of the time, if I'm on the Citadel, I am streaming. I think the things that I don't stream are the admin tasks, like flying around the end before updating to a new version of Minecraft and making sure everything is A-OK -okay and double checking the positions of the end portals and doing that kind of admin thing. That's something that I, I tend to do off camera because that's kind of boring. But like yesterday, we spent an hour, the first hour of the stream was spent um, putting things away in shulker boxes, organizing for the next build, uh, making a trip to go get some resources for that build and then only like roughly starting it. It wasn't like a big deal. It was just a very basic stream. But I think it's important to share that kind of content because I mean, I feel like so many times people look at huge cr content creators and the, and the awesome builds that they do and then they don't see the behind the scenes. I think a really good example of that actually is recently uh, Pixel Rifts has been spending a lot of time on the SOS Minecraft server uh, putting together the the big dig cylinder, the mining cylinder for his sci-fi build. And I think he completed it yesterday. There was a, or today maybe. Um, but he's, I, I think there might've been a little bit of time off camera, but most of it was was spent streaming. So when you have a big project like that, like I think that streaming is a really good place for it. CJ says, I'm kind of over Twitch as a platform. You are really the only person and why I stay here. Well, I, that's flattering, but also I, I feel bad for other streamers that you might be missing out on, but I appreciate it. It's a huge time sink. That's why I'm always so thankful when people are here, especially live, you know, and live for the whole thing. You know, I, I really, really appreciate it. Uh... Lily, it's my first time here. I work with Grandpa Crafter and I got to see him build the Lego. So here I am uh, all about the castle. I'm excited to be here. Well, that's very cool. Thank you to Grandpa Crafter for uh, for kidnapping you and bringing you in. I mean, introducing you to, to the community. That's great. Glad to have you. Dan Grace, yesterday was great. You, like, you liked that stream yesterday? Uh, not one that you would recognize, Cosmic Dancer, I would say Halcyon Heights adjacent. That's maybe why the name sounds familiar in addition to the raids. Hangs out in Ginger Stream a lot and Tadpole. Okay, that's, I've probably heard, because very often I'll hang out in Tadpole stream after I, after I raid, as I like do graphics and do like download the video and get it prepped for YouTube and stuff. If I don't have to rush right to the gym, then that's generally what I do. And I've probably heard uh, a back and forth between Tadpole Milk and Cat the possum. What's really funny is that when you say cat the possum without seeing it spelt with a K, uh, it sounds like a funny, funny like animal name, like a cat, C A T, cat the possum. It's like getting a dog and calling it cat, you know? I do find sometimes those kind of names for animals are amusing. Grandpa Crafter poked a friend in the arm. That's true. That is indeed what I mean by that. I don't think I say that at the end of the spawn chunks anymore. I used to. The joke, it was always a, a pandemic joke. It was a poke a friend in the arm from a safe distance and tell them to listen to the spawn chunks.
I do still enjoy some Twitch streams. Uh, when I catch them, I do really enjoy them. Tangent has got a really good community. He's also just really entertaining to listen to. And that guy can talk. Like, I, I sometimes struggle during a Lego stream to fill some, some dead air. But, but when Tangent is doing anything in a game, he's always just so on top of everything. And I, I, would, I would say a very positive person. I, I don't know that I've heard him really get into any rants. I, I don't listen to his stuff all the time, but I, I feel like whenever I've been by, it's always been a really kind of jovial, fun conversation. <laughs> Cosmic Dancer, what can I say? I'm OG. Yep. OG or OB? Original gangster? Original Brit? Original... What, what, what do you guys say in the UK? Geezer? Original geezer? Oh, you like Tangent 2, Cosmic. Cool. Very cool. Other great streamers for sure, says CJ. Just find myself wanting uh, to consume less media online and that Twitch's UI isn't my favorite at this point. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I've actually, um, I was talking with a friend the other day. I have been, I've been bad this week because of a couple of nights I couldn't sleep. But the week before, I was up at either 5.30 or 6 every day and out for a walk for 35 to 40 minutes and I'm still currently using my phone as my alarm clock but I'm going to be trying to change that and just going to pick up a cheap alarm clock off of Amazon uh, so I would only touch my phone to turn off the alarm check the weather because I live in Canada and I need to know what I need to wear I can't just walk outside in shorts and t-shirts at 6 a.m. and expect to be okay um, it's really warm today, but it, it has not been up until just this week. Um, and then I turn on a podcast and then that's it. The phone's in my pocket and I don't, because I'm out walking around, I'm not on it. I don't need to look at it. And that stays that way because when I get home from my walk, I shower, I make breakfast and I either, I should be reading more, but I've been, I've been watching some stuff on YouTube mostly. And I haven't shared this yet. I've been researching uh, picking up an acoustic guitar and so I've been trying to figure out what kind of acoustic guitar I want to get and um, what what sounds I like uh, whether to buy it new or used all that kind of stuff and uh, Johnny was actually really helpful I actually I asked him in the render distance a couple of weeks ago like what should I look for um, in an instrument and then I talked to my good friend Britt the other night and was informed because I'm just so out of touch out of this like I, I haven't picked up a guitar in 20 years um and i and i played bass i'm i'm looking to pick up a six string acoustic and brit said like you can rent guitars so like you don't have to drop 300 or 400 dollars on a guitar only to find out that there could have been one better for you you can spend 20 bucks and, and rent one for a week i was like that is an excellent idea so that's probably what i'm gonna do Cosmic, you were kind of scared when I was going to say what the B stood for. Oh, you know me better than that. Is the geezer more south? Is it more London? It, I, it strikes me as something from, from south. All right, so we need to find the back is that way. So these go on the front this way. At this moment in the construction. Clicky click. That is rather sturdy. Very cool.
That is really neat. So now we've got panels on both sides of the wing supports. And then just these last pieces. So clip piece three, single on that, and then this little bit on the end. And I need four of those. Sometimes you don't want to talk over the satisfying click of everything going together. That's that. And then upside down. And I'm assuming this is just going to cover the, the exposed guts on the top and the bottom. And they go. Ah, okay. So there's a clip piece. This has got a claw and there's a little bar right in there. The connections in this kit, I have to say, are really something else. Really something else. It's unique too in that it's not like a smooth, like it actually, it actually, if you held it straight, it's out like that, but then you click it down at an angle. So it creates like a bit more texture as it goes down. Neat. But then the bottom one, is not quite the same angle or is it no the bottom one is not the bottom one is a different angle oh, that's cool well i'm surprised that little bag took the first hour i guess we did the unboxing first too now it's really starting to look beefy right got these extra bits on it so that's what we're looking at right now bag number seven is next but first I need to take a break. Thank you for the reminder, Cosmic. Page 69. For folks that are new, I take a break once an hour. It gives me a chance to grab another glass of water. It gives you a chance to stretch. Maybe even grab a friend. Poke a friend in the arm like Grandpa Crafter. And bring them into the community and to the stream. I will be back in about five or six minutes.
All right, bag number seven. We might not get to bag eight today. I guess it depends on how quickly bag seven comes together. And we keep losing the sun outside. It was a really nice morning, almost too warm. I couldn't sit outside uh, at lunchtime. It was just too hot. Uh, but I'm hoping for a nice evening. Uh, knife. Thank you, Cosmic. Thank you, CJ. 
Do we still have a Grandpa Crafter, or have we lost the eastern part of the planet? Surprise, folks. There's more gray pieces. <laughs> still here. Very cool. Uh, well, Grandpa Crafter, thank you for bringing in uh, Lily. And I missed it in chat if they mentioned it. Uh, am I pronouncing the name right? I mean, I know it's a username, but I try to get them at least close. Sometimes people base the usernames off their real names. I have to say, though, one of my favorite responses to someone that has an unpronounceable username or something that they want you to pronounce one way, but they've spelt entirely differently uh, is, I think, one time in Pixel Rift's stream, he referred to somebody as Keyboard Smash, and I was like, that is just, that's spot on. <laughs> Love it. So, I don't know if I've been able to use it on my own, but it's definitely a very cool idea. Hey, look, it's a game controller piece. That's fun. You know what would be a really cool thing, and I th I'm sure this probably exists, but in all the developments in AI, in recent years, it would be really cool to have a little homemade robot arm that could have a camera and they would see pieces and just be able to just like start separating them out. Like, I'm not saying that I would want it to, to lay everything out, but it would be really cool if it would be able to distinguish, you know, colors, you know, and grab like the red pieces and put them together and just, you know, separate everything out. That, I, that would be neat. I'd still want to do the knolling as part of the process, but I think it would be a really cool project. Something that I've always wanted to know more about is like coding and robotics. And it's just, it's never been in the wheelhouse of skills that my profession ever really required. So I never got into it. I think my buddy James would be really interested in that kind of stuff. Did anybody see the AI presentation from chat gpt 40 i haven't watched it yet i've only heard that it was kind of eerie and i keep on seeing back and forth i don't know whether they made it sound like scarlett johansson and they're being sued or whether they were threatened to be sued and so they made it not sound like scarlett johansson i don't know the idea is that they were mimicking the movie her and the criticism online is that did you watch the movie because the message of that movie as cool as it is is that humans are more disconnected because of AI, <laughs> not, not more connected. Which I think is a good extension of what's happened with the internet too. Like on one hand, there's communities like mine, people that come together from all over the world. And on the other hand, I will be just as guilty as spending too much time on the internet as anyone else, you know? Which I think is another really good reason to schedule social events with friends, you know, standing invites for beers with the boys, brunch with the girls, beer with the girls, like whatever, you know, I'm not, I'm not laying down specifics, but whatever you are into, do it in person with friends and have it be scheduled. I was watching an interview with Tim Ferriss uh, a couple of weeks ago. And the question was like, what, what would you do? Um, uh, what would be the advice for somebody that's suffering from like too much work, uh, putting in the grind, like just having a hard time balancing? And he said, like, schedule, like, absolutely schedule your social stuff. You know, uh, he was saying that his, his family puts vacations on the calendar specifically, like, two or three times a year. And they're not, you know, necessarily big trips, but, like, they're very specific with that purpose of, like, if you want a meeting with me, it can't be on that second week of August because I am not here. And he, he does it on purpose. Uh, also does it throughout the week, you know, puts, like, you know, I have... I want to make sure I don't work past X amount on Thursdays, so, you know, or Fridays. So I schedule dinner with friends Thursdays and Fridays. Different friends, you know, just kind of do it. I mean, it's a, that's a luxury. I don't know whether that's going out for dinner. That could be just having someone over for dinner. So it doesn't have to be a big um, economic sink, you know, big money sink. Because going out is expensive sometimes. Never heard them use their username in real life, so I have no idea. Okay, well, then we'll just consider ourselves right, Grandpa Crafter. Uh, zero T triple six. Hello. Welcome in. 
Had you mentioned morning podcasts before you took a break? Are you willing to share any of the podcasts you're enjoying listening to? Yeah, sure. Uh, I like... Got my phone right next to me here. I like... The Diary of a CEO with Stephen Bartlett. I like... The Grinding Gear podcast with Garrett Weinzerl and Kyle Ferguson. They're buddies of mine. I haven't talked to them in a while, but I do know them. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum is pretty good. Um, Modern Wisdom is the one I listen to a fair fair bit. That's with uh, Chris Williamson. More Money Podcast is a Canadian financial podcast. Party Lines and The Line are Canadian political podcasts. The Rick Roll Podcast can be good. I don't always listen. It depends on the guest. The Sackoff Show, S-A-C-K-H-O-F-F. That's Katie Sackoff, who plays Bo-Katan on The Mandalorian. She's got her own podcast. Recently interviewed Kevin Smith. Great episode. Uh, and What Now with Trevor Noah. I'd th- I'd say those would kind of top out my top rotating. I've got others on this list, but they're also very specific to like Canadian finance or that kind of stuff. So maybe not everyone's wheelhouse. And if that was read too fast, maybe someone can clip it just for reference. Maybe post it in the Discord. Love What Now with Trevor Noah. It will t- I'll take a look at a few of those others that you listed. Thanks so much. Oh, you're welcome. Um, did you listen to the latest with uh, Gabrielle? I can't remember his name. Fluffy, the comedian. Uh, but Gabrielle is, I think, his first name. Um, He's great. He's a reason. That was a really good conversation. A little short. I, I do find that the conversations with Trevor Noah are a little bit short and they don't, they're cool armchair conversations, but they're not always like in-depth interviews. They can be. Trevor Noah's conversation with Dwayne Johnson was fantastic. Uh, another really good conversation with Dwayne Johnson, if you're a fan, is the, uh, his um, appearance on the Joe Rogan podcast. I'm not a huge Joe Rogan fan. I, I don't always like the conversations on that show. So with Joe Rogan, I tend to just look at it depending on who's on the, on the show. Like if it's, if it's a person that I'm very interested in, like if Schwarzenegger was on, um, that's another one. Oh, you know what? I also listened to the new Heights podcast, which is, uh, Jason and Travis Kelsey, but I watched that on YouTube. They're just so animated when they talk. It's more fun for me to watch that one. And so that's, I I don't have it subscribed on my podcast app on my phone. I tend to watch it rather um, that's the, that's the podcast where like, I'll have it on in the background on the TV while I'm making dinner or doing dishes. So like I can turn around and watch it a bit while I'm doing something, you know, waiting for something to sear in the pan or like whatever you're doing. Um, that's a good one. And is there anything else that I watch? I feel like the Joe Rogan one is a, is another one that's not on my phone because that's the, that's another one that I would watch because it has a video component. Um, that would That's a tricky one though, because for that you have to go to the Spotify app, which there is for Xbox, and it's not bad, like it's a, de- it's a decent app. But like most of the time when my Xbox is on, um, I am embarrassed to say that I'm usually watching YouTube on it. I do game on it from time to time, but most of the time it's like I'm, I'm consuming YouTube and Apple TV. Actually, that reminds me, the next thing that I'm talking about on the Citadel Cafe is going to be Sugar, which is a detective show. And I'm going to be very careful here not to spoil anything. Starring Colin Farrell. It is really well written, extremely well acted. Colin Farrell is fantastic, really subtle, and really interesting and unique editing, which I was not expecting. They cut it with a lot of old movies, like a lot of old mysteries and stuff like that. And it's, it's really, really well done. Highly re- recommend. A uh, little violent, not for small humans in the room, but a, re- a really, really good watch. I very much enjoyed it and recommend it to people. And that's it. That's all I'm going to say because it's a mystery and you can't really talk about it without spoiling it. So when I talk about it on the Citadel Cafe, I will be 
putting a giant spoiler warning ahead of my conversation. I want an AI that will listen to my meetings that require minutes to do them so I don't have to. Yeah, that's a really good. See, that's the kind of thing where that's what AI should be used for. Like a listening AI that will take notes from a meeting. That that's helpful, right? I don't want an a chat bot to go look up stuff and scrape it off the internet and hope that I get it right because they just scrape. So there's they're scraping content that's potentially wrong and there's no way to vet that unless you're using a human to vet that. So I, that's what I find um, problematic with AI right now. I mean, we're all dying for that assistant, that AI virtual assistant that sounds like Jarvis, right? Like that's what I think a lot of people are looking for. I'd love it. But like I have the Alexa, um, I'm just going to put these up here, however. Um, I have the uh, Alexa uh ai not ai vo voice assistant i have the alexa voice assistant on my echo in the living room and i won't say the wake word now because of course it'll activate but i use it to turn on the xbox i have a command it's it's on screen and i say the command word and i say on screen and it should do a number of things it should turn on the xbox turn on the tv and then turn on the tv lights behind the tv and sometimes works like a charm other times it just says, would you like me to do that on the Xbox or on the Roku? And I say, on the Xbox. But like, what, why are you asking me? You, it's the one command that I gave you. I made it. It's not like it's an existing command. You know, it must be conflicting with something else. But I don't want to come up with another thing because being like, I, I could just say, turn on the Xbox, but it's just turn on the Xbox. Like it's five syllables as opposed to two, right? And it seems silly. I just, I kind of want that star trek experience right it's a combination of like that that fun role play fantasy of like being on the bridge of the enterprise or being iron man i mean iron man is probably cooler for me but i've seen her zero triple uh, t triple six i have seen her it was a very good movie it's one of my favorites actually the mighty elkhorn hello hello Much more supportive of a style of AI that acts as a personal assistant rather than generative. Yeah, me too. I, I think that's also a better, a better use of the technology. I tell you, I'm really glad that I am no longer doing a lot of illustration or design work because I feel like a lot of artists are feeling, feeling some pinching, you know, uh, with AI generated art. It's, uh, it's unfortunately not very good, but it's very cheap. And a lot of times in commercial art, the bottom dollar is what the clients are after. And it's a real shame. I'm glad that I'm not stressing out about my income being beholden to, you know, the new technologies. I, um, the bottleneck that I deal with right now is is me. I have to be on mic. I have to be on stream. I have to be playing Minecraft. I have to be like, it's me. Uh, the, the commodity, the product of what I do is me. It's the entertainment. So it's very hard to scale when it's me. And so the challenge I'm having lately is trying to figure out how I can work smarter, not harder. Because as I discussed in one of my town hall meetings recently, I streamed 100 hours more in the first quarter of 2023 than I did in 2024, which was, I don't remember the percentage, but it was 100 hours more, but I only made 10% more money, you know, in terms of revenue and support. So more, more butt time in chair does not equal the equivalent of more income. And so working harder, like just throwing 
more streams more you know more streams per week does not necessarily equal more support which in other industries it, it can you know like in other industries you can say all right well if you're in sales and you're only spending 20 hours a week selling well then spend 40 hours a week selling and chances are you will end up selling more right it's a really good good metric but i mean providing you're doing things properly and you know what you're doing and all that stuff um, i'm not a salesperson don't don't at me um but when it comes to this kind of entertainment stuff it's it's difficult you know i think a really good example would be why so many stand-up comedians have podcasts now and it's because if they're touring and they're up on stage then they have to be up on stage and only the people that are there can see them uh but if they do a podcast that's recorded then they can do that one thing and have it be seen by countless people and it's archived so if you find a podcast that you like from a comedian that you like you can go back through the archive and listen to a bunch right so that's that's a great good example of working hard, uh, smarter not harder I have, you know what? I've not been paying attention to what these pieces are really. I don't know what we're building next. So it should be interesting. Bag six was less of a surprise just because I kind of knew where we were going. Mini packs. Hello, hello, hello. CJ says, don't get me started about AI generated music. I'm honestly a bit worried about life 20 years from now, given the amount of progress that has been made in the last two or three. The thing I think you'll see, uh, it won't happen, unfortunately, soon. Or perhaps not soon enough. But I think one thing that you will see will be a pushback. In the same way that you've seen a pushback in food from it's easy uh, frozen pizza, feed your family in 20 minutes, you know, when you're, when you're home from a long day of work. Um, people are a lot more aware now that heavily processed foods are not good for you, right? High in sodium, all kinds of stuff. Better to get natural. Better to get, I don't want to say organic because organic is just, you know, a label. But there's, there's definitely a push, certainly in the circles that I travel in, in online, for healthier eating knowing more about the food that you're consuming, uh, which was not the case 15 years ago. So I think we'll see a pushback for art artists. Um, for example, one of the things that I'm seeing an awful lot of on my Instagram feed is artists that are painting on canvas, not digital. Like it is a thing. It's a physical thing that an AI at the moment can't do. Right. And, and I think that you might see a pushback to more, we'll call it organic arts, you know, music composed by a human, um, live music performed by a human, that kind of stuff. All right, bag seven, here we go. Officially started. Getting right into the colors right away. Mini Pack says, I'm in that situation too. I need to dedicate time to making passive income streams so I can make money in other streams while I'm working on other things. So, yep, that's my issue too. I've been toying around with doing some uh, some merchandise, you know, like t-shirts or mugs or something, but it's hard to figure out how to do that in a non-kitschy way. Like I just don't want to be someone making crap with my logo on it you know like I, I kind of want it to be more meaningful than that but i also uh, having done a small publishing company uh in the past 
And while I did have a distributor and a printer, I still had to manage a lot of that. So by going with something like um, Shopify or something that has like a, a print on demand system, uh, there is potential for that. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Pay passive income, but the margin is so low that you have to make a, a re like a really high amount of sales. Uh, and then you run into the fact that you have to become a salesman and I'm just, it, that's, it's, it's just not in my personality. It's not my wheelhouse. I've never been very good at it. Um, I mean, you could argue, well, Joel, get good at it, you know? Um, and I do, I'm, I am looking into maybe getting some advice from, for social media and some things like that, but we'll see. Um, I've always been more of a marathon, not a sprint guy. So we'll see. Uh, one of the things that I, I think will be an interesting tell is how things go with moving the spun chunks to video, which I think I've mentioned before. I don't know if I'm stealing our own thunder, but we're moving the spun chunks podcast to a video podcast. There will still be audio. Every, anytime people are listening to audio already, it'll be the same. Uh, but the YouTube experience will be different. Instead of a title card, there'll be video of Johnny and I having a conversation. So we'll have to see how that goes. And then this goes this way. The hope is that that will get more attention Flip that over. And uh, and hopefully bring in some new some new viewers, new listeners. Uh what? What am I oh, is it dark? I guess this is a dark one. Yeah. Really hard to tell. That doesn't look that different in the manual. Clickety clack. This attaches there like that. Teaching watercolor techniques and illustration is a thing now. Oh, totally. I think you hit the nail on the head with organic arts. I remember when I was in college being told over and over that if you want to make money, go into film composition. And I have to say, at least AI can't replicate live concert experiences uh, because that's 100% of my work. Yeah, no, I agree. Minipack says right now AI is a tool to use and everyone is using it as if it outputs a good end result. It uh, is uneducated in the end result but in the art, music, and text, et cetera. Yeah, I feel like if I was doing artwork, um, what I would probably be using AI or let's say ChatGPT or like DaVinci or whatever, what I would probably be using that for would be to expedite the brainstorming um, stage of any drawing that I would be doing. Where normally I'd be spending maybe an hour on Google image search, looking for reference images, looking for ideas, trying to see what other artists have done on the specific subject matter so I can avoid copying and, and try to come up with my own ideas or seeing something that someone li that, you know, that I like do something and say, all right, well, I like what they did. How can I do something like that, but my own way, make it different, make it unique, put my own voice to it. And I feel like even though I haven't had the chance to practice it because I've you know, I don't do a lot of illustration anymore. I, I feel like AI would speed up that brainstorm process. That's my, I guess, not impression, assumption.
That goes like that, and then this goes on this side like this. Okay. Oh, so this is like a side panel. And then this goes this way. Back. So it's going to attach on these pieces here. And then I'm guessing that folds in. Yeah, okay. We're slowly building out the, the round shape as best as they can make a round shape in Lego. It looks, it ends up looking more like a pumpkin. If there's one thing I admire about you, it's your integrity. Cosmic, thank you very much. That's really kind of you to say. You always think carefully about what you're doing and why you don't put things out there just for the sake of it. You do things in a thoughtful, meaningful way. There, uh, there are not a lot of creators I can say the same about. Well, thank you. Because um, I have certainly thought about just going the low road <laughs> and just throwing a bunch of crap on t-shirts and seeing what sticks, <laughs> you know? Um, speaking of, I want to give a shout out. I don't remember her name. I should probably look this up. Oh, where's my phone? Uh, I want to get this right because she's both funny and very creative. It's a TikTok creator. And she does bird pun embroidered t-shirts. Nope, I don't want to do that. Let's. That's the right creator. Stop. Stop talking. Um, username is mo underscore sews. M-O-E underscore S-E-W-S. Uh, she is very funny. They are inappropriate embroidered bird pun t-shirts and sweatshirts. Uh, you will find them very funny. And you will find her very entertaining. And she's very creative and doing her own thing. And I think it's great. But I think that's a good example of integrity, Cosmic. Like, the those bird t-shirts that, that Mo makes could be completely like mass produced printed on some cheap stuff from overseas and just farmed out there right but instead they're embroidered in a in a much more meaningful process i think certainly meaningful to her um but she's a good follow on social media whether you find her on instagram tiktok whatever tiktok would be where i would look first but then i i'm sure she has links to other places I uh, will not put the link to her in chat, but I know what you mean and you love her. Okay, cool. I mean, you can put the link in chat if you want. But yes, the the the, the content that she makes is a, is a little on the adult side. Um, but yeah, mo, mo underscore sos. If you just go to if you just go to uh, TikTok and search bird puns, you will one hundred percent find her. And it's a really good example of being niche, right? Like it's a really good example of not making pun T-shirts. Not making um, broad, you know, dirty joke t-shirts. They are specifically embroidered bird. Like it has to be a real live animal bird that exists on the planet. Puns. Like it's very specific. Um, I feel like she does very well. She, I hope she does because she's very creative and very, like her marketing stuff is great. CJ says, I agree with you, but I'm not convinced that enough con consumers are paying attention to really realize what is going on when they are consuming things. I saw a study on AI generated music using Udio, U-D-I-O, asking listeners to determine real versus AI, and the number of times AI was considered real was disturbing. Oh, I see it all the time in art. You'll see somebody post something on, on Facebook, and it'll be like, you know, a really good example. My friend Scott Johnson posted an image. He goes, I just saw this. I was going to the comments to anticipate a bunch of people saying like, oof, this is so fake. But instead, on this fake image of a American soldier, potentially a wife and a newborn baby wrapped in an American flag, all the comments were like, thank you for your service and what a well-meeting, wonderful photo. You maybe shouldn't wrap a baby in a flag. That's not the best use of the American flag, stuff like that. Real, like serious comments from people that did not think twice 
that it was an AI generated image. Like it just, and Scott was like, that is embarrassing. How many people just, just didn't even bother to think more than two seconds before chiming in to say, you know, to, to comment and be part of the conversation. They're just so energized to not miss out and be part of something that they don't bother to think about what they're being part of, right? I think people need to start looking at images and content on the internet the same way every day that you approach a cold call coming into your cell phone. You know, when I pick, I answer the phone sometimes, you know, like I, I, I don't always not grab the, the phone because like it could be the front door, it could be, you know, Amazon, it could be something that I need to actually get. Um, but it's, it's wild how many times it's like a scam call and very obvious, you know, and I think people have gotten used to scam calls. I think people have gotten used to scam texts and stuff. And so they, they approach messages from people they don't know, phone calls from, uh, say for example, Amazon, Amazon will never call you. They just won't. They'll email you, but they're not going to call you about suspicious activity on your account. That's just not a thing, right? I've been getting this scam lately where Amazon calls and said, uh, you, you've got a, someone purchased an iPhone on your account. I was like, no, they didn't. I mean, I'll still hang up and then go check, uh, you know, through a password protected browser, my bank, you know, credit card just to make sure. But like, I know, I know it's not going to be anything. Um, oh, I got ahead of myself there. Where, how does that go? Oh, okay. Uh, that goes underneath there, I guess. But yeah, I feel like if we start approaching everything online, as in like, I'm assuming this is fake until proven otherwise, right? I've seen it a lot on TikTok recently. I've seen, seen a lot of... Um, of like videos, explosions, stuff like that. Tornado, storms. I've seen some storms that are, um, that look convincing. Um, but then something else in the video just doesn't add up. Like something isn't moving or blowing around fast enough. The lighting seems a little bit off when you just take a second to look at it. But I mean, it is, if you're not paying attention, you know, you're scrolling late at night, you're just kind of like half asleep. I mean, you, you will miss stuff like that. I agree when you're talking about customers says mini packs i mean creators using it to farm content and they're just putting out trash like you say the issue is customer buying it yeah yep 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 link to the website is mosos.com thank you cosmic that's great mosos.com m-o-e-s-e-w-s.com Minipack says we have someone ripping off our products at the moment and using AI social media to push people towards it. It's very frustrating. Man, I that sucks, man. Uh, that is a rough. That's a rough thing to contend with, especially when you when you are um, only a small operation and the number of AI. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oop! Did I do that right? Um, the, the, like the volume that you can get from AI to contend with is very tricky. This goes here or my conversation is distracting a little bit. I just need to concentrate here. Make sure I don't screw this up. I think that's right. But that sucks, mini packs. I'm really sorry to hear that. That's a pain. CJ says, well, unfortunately, when customers aren't paying attention, it's creators who are paying well with their livelihoods. Challenging times for sure. Yeah, I agree.
Yeah, most of the time, Cosmic, you're right. I don't answer the phone unless I recognize the number. Um, I think the issue is that because of things that I'm, that's happening right now, like it's tax season. Uh, I have, you know, I've got feelers out with mortgage specialists as I'm looking for a house. Like it just, there's, there's a potential for people to call me that I don't necessarily have the number already in my phone. So I, I'm a little bit more more diligent on that kind of stuff. I also, so here's the thing that, and this might not be the same in the States, but in Canada, if it's like a telemarketer and they call you, um, they're legally obligated to remove your phone number from the database if you request that. So if it's like a survey or whatever, um, I'll just politely say, hey, I, I don't have time to speak with you right now. And can you please remove my name from and number from your calling list? And they legally have to oblige to that in Canada. So, um, if it's something like, you know, if I see an art, like a, a bank or maybe like, you know, Liberal Party of Canada or like whatever, um, I just, I, I'm not interested in unsolicited phone calls. And so I'll ask them to remove me from the list. I think that's right. All down there. Oop, nope. But caution is always a, a good way to go, I would say. That goes this way. I'll say that this model is getting a bit better. It's a little bit sturdier now, so I feel like I can put more pressure on it. to fasten things in place, bend things into exactly the right position that they're intended to be. It's a little bit easier. Our phone networks really need to normalize visual voicemail to help us vet those calls. Yeah, totally. I think that should be required. One of the big problems other than loss of revenue is people still think we sold it to them so they can complain to us when it turns out to be a cheap refurbished made out of plastic or cheap rubbish made of plastic. Yeah, that's tricky. That's tricky. Uh, what if they're not calling from Canada? Then I answer the phone and it's like a Chinese recording. <laughs> um, most of the time it's a Canadian situation. Uh, and Abu, like, honestly, it only works if it's a Canadian, like if it's, if it's a call center from Canada, chances are there's a real person on the other, other side of it. Um, whereas the automated recordings come from international and there's, I, I never had that problem until I recently switched, uh, providers a couple years ago, I moved to bell just cause it was cheaper and had unlimited data. And, um, it's either that or just some online stuff. Uh, I feel like there's been a lot more phone calls ever since I started on TikTok. You know, there's there's some things that have not not happened before, but are happening now. But then again, like I just you know, your information is out there. If you want to use the internet, if you want to use social media, there's a there's a cost. And if there's no cost monetarily, then the cost is your data and who has access to it. And that's something that I'm just I'm willing I'm willing to pay. I understand that it's my own fault when I signed up for something like TikTok, I, I anticipated spam like I, I knew, but you know what? I like cooking in puppy videos and I like cooking in puppy videos more than I dislike spam. So there's that. It's a really interesting little detail with this, this uh, piece. It looks like it's, like a housing for the, the, the engine or what could be an engine. So this piece goes on here like this. So it creates like this cool bracket right back to what, um, I think it was Jack said in his email to the sponge chunks, which was that the more unique pieces that can be in a kit, uh, the better. And so this looks like it goes this way.
seems like a really small engine. Maybe it's supposed to be an exhaust port. I've always thought that the TIE Fighters should have a better, more visual, like green glowing engine or something. It is, they never seem to, the engines never seem to look as cool as they sound. Because that's, I mean, that's how they got their name. It's a twin ion engine fighter, hence TIE, right? One of my favorite pastimes is hearing Mr. Cosmic answer the phone to one of those marketing places because he will just absolutely tear a hole in them about GDPR and data protection. Oh, wow. See, I have more fun with that. I'll, I'll be just like Duggan's house of uh, pancakes and waffles or just something silly. Or my favorite is, um, is uh, Duggan's Moratorium. You whack them, we crack them. How can I help you? And people just like stumble. What, what, what did you just say? It's fun. It's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. Now this, I think, has to go... Oh, I made that backwards. Crap. Go this way. They actually... They didn't give me instructions to mirror that. This actually has to go up. That goes on there like that. I'm a little bit worried that I missed that piece. That seems like a large piece to have left over. Oh, let's double check. Where could that have gone? It's probably meant to go underneath one of these. And I probably missed that step. Yes, I did. So the question is, which one? Those both don't have anything. Darn it. So it's this one on this side. Oh, I see it. I see where it needs to go. Okay, hold on. It's one thing when you get used to these, you're like, oh yeah, I should not have a big piece like that left over. And then this goes and attaches this way. Honestly, I think one of the hardest things about a Lego build is if you get something wrong and trying to triage and get the thing in there, the way that it was intended, is a little tricky, I have to say. All right, well, we are just, just under the two hour mark, so I think that's where I'm gonna leave it for today. Because that brings us to the start of bag eight. And it looks like bag eight is just gonna be the same thing on the front panels, so, uh, We'll just move on from there. But the back of this is looking pretty solid. Looking like it has a lot more shape to it. Very happy with that. Really tickled by the lovely gift, Grandpa Crafter. Thank you ever so much for creating a custom Lego set based on the front gate of West Hill on the Citadel. That is extraordinarily thoughtful. I'm looking forward to building that once we're done with the TIE Fighter. Uh, we're going to pass you all along to Tadpole Milk if they are still live. That's usually a good place to send everyone on a Friday. Very chill very chuckly Twitch streamer playing some Minecraft. I think you will enjoy it. 
You can, of course, follow on social media at Joel Duggan on Instagram and on Twitter. That's where I post when I go live. That's where I post images of the things that I've done on the Lego table every Friday. You can follow things like the Spawn Chunks podcasts for free on all of the major podcasting platforms, including YouTube. That goes the same for the Citadel Cafe that is available wherever you listen to your podcasts. And I really need to get my butt in gear and get the latest episode out. We recorded three weeks ago and I just have not finished editing it yet. But it's coming. It's uh, That show is more of a hobby show now. Uh, the Spawn Chunks, of course, is weekly. By the numbers, we're coming up on episode 299 this Monday. And episode 300 is going to be in the first week of June. And we've got some special announcements coming. So I think you will enjoy it. Uh, be sure to check out Patreon, which is a wonderful way to support your favorite creators, including me, patreon.com slash Joel Duggan. If I'm one of your favorites, then consider $2 a month. It's less than the price of a cup of coffee. And it goes a long way to supporting me with regular income based on um, the subscription model on Patreon. It gets you access to the Discord. There's different levels. You can play on the Minecraft server with friends. There's all kinds of cool stuff. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out either on Twitter or in the Discord if you're already there. Happy to explain where the support comes from and how it affects me if you need to know. Um, thank you ever, ever so much to everybody for this great afternoon. I will see you tomorrow, Saturday. One o'clock Atlantic, that's UTC minus four hours for more Minecraft uh, working on the pumpkin farm just outside of Westo. See you then. Bye for now.